Hey, good morning, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Crypto Lounge. And our topic for today is blockchain and education. If this is your first time here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel so that every time we do a live broadcast, you will be notified. So let's get started. By the way, I'm Doc Vince, and uh, though I'm a medical professional, I am also a blockchain advocate, and I would like uh, to welcome all of you here in Crypto Lounge. Now, our topic for today is blockchain and education. Is blockchain applicable in education? So our guest for this episode is a pioneer in PBL and STEM programs in Brazil for schools and universities. He is an HTML coin ambassador and CELO or CELO ambassador in Brazil. So tonight, without further ado, it's time to roll out the red carpet for a special guest, the associate founder of eToken, Miss Manuel, Miss, oh, sorry, Mr. Manuel, Professor Manuel Belém. Professor, how are you? Oh, hello. How are you, sir? Thanks for the invitation for doing this. Huh? Oh, you're more than, more than welcome. And it's our pleasure for you to be here. And uh, how, how are you? How, how are things there? What makes you busy nowadays? Hey, uh, we have a company that has two initiatives and a uh, <laughs> One of the initiatives is in blockchain. It's a e token, it's a discount coupon for uh, loyalty programs. Okay. It's a universal token. And the other initiative, it's Learn Steam, that it's an education company that deals with the learning programs for uh, schools, high schools, and the universities uh, using the STEM approach for uh, active learning and PBL for active learning. Wow. Now, before we move forward, maybe you could uh, tell our audience a short background about yourself and what uh, currently you're doing. Well, um, I'm a serial business developer. Uh, I was a pioneer in distance learning in Brazil in uh, the 80s or 90s, okay? I am, a, as you told, a ambassador of Celo and HTM, HTML coin. And uh, I have um, a background in physics. And I am a physicist from the University of Sao Paulo. And I have some marketing specialization. And I am a, also a board member certified by IBGC in Brazil. And at nowadays, I am uh, doing uh, post-graduation in the University of Sao Paulo. Now, Professor, can you talk more about, because you did mention eToken, can you talk more about eToken? Okay. Um, well, uh, this is the beginning of my contact with the uh, blockchain. I was, uh, I was very, very uh, curiosity because I would like to know uh, how, how does th those things work, how blockchain works. And then I discover and realize that the Mr. Satoshi, that was the guy that created that, was uh, just created that to, to um, substitute the trust in someone uh, when we are exchange value. So this made me very, very, how can I say, very uh, impressive and i began to uh, apply this in other uh, areas okay so the first tentative was uh, in agricultural process and uh, we create uh, uh, agro token that was uh, a cryptocurrency uh, used to stimulate it agricultural all the ecosystem of agricultural so uh, the farmer the manufacturer of uh, equipments and uh, the drones that do the over overview of the property and th those 
those persons of the ecosystem they were using and uh, exchanging this agro token and uh, the second one was uh, for uh, the loyalty market and it, the e token as a universal token for discount coupons process mm. that will permit to be used in everything it's a new kind of concept of uh, loyalty okay that it's different you don't have to to uh, exchange the the token with the same one the, with the same person that give you the token you can use it universally in different uh, uh, customer areas okay now you did mention about the stem pbl and your education background let's go to the main topic we're in blockchain and education. Where do you see where, where's the role of blockchain in education? Oh, okay. Um, this is very good because uh, it has, uh, it really has to do with my work. It has two things, blockchain in education and education in blockchain. Um, in my opinion, uh, there are two ways. The first way it, uh, Blockchain will allow us to create learn coins. In fact, our, our first business in Brazil was related to that. Learn coins will support education uh, as a trackable discount coupon and will support education for all the vulnerable people. And this will be something very good because you can put money in education and you can really know where it is going to be used. The second way of doing things is education in blockchain that you can allow young people at high school to understand how it works and begin to experiment the solution inside the school and then comes outside the school. It will be the next generation, the, the crypto generation that will deal with this new economy. Hmm. And... Uh... Looking at 2021, what would be the impact of blockchain and education? Well, also, in, in my opinion, the, the most important and uh, maybe the hidden impact is the social impact, the democratization and the transparency in the education process. So you can promote the scholarship and finance education for vulnerable people and you can know that the money was going was used to do that. You don't have anyone can check it in a blockchain and can see if the money that was going to education just come to education really fast and really trustable. So this social impact will be the best thing of the blockchain. And uh, my my thing is, what are the challenges that you have encountered? using blockchain in education and vice versa? Okay, I think that um, the big challenge in a, in a blockchain is to make it as anonymous as a cryptographic key is today. So uh, let me explain that. You don't mm -hmm. see banks in the past selling ATM machines with a, with a backbone, with a symmetric crypto using TCP IP address to give you money wherever you are. You haven't seen the banks doing that. They just sell, they just sell in, in an advertisement that if you are a VIP guy, you got a plastic platinum card that will permit you with four digits get money wherever you are. So they didn't explain that uh, asymmetric cryptography and everything like that. So the big challenge for blockchain is to be used when you don't see that you are using that, but you trust even if you don't know how it works. It's This is the big challenge. And, I, and this is something that is not going to be done by the bank as in the past. So this will be done by the startup the the fintech that are going to be uh, uh, coming with this idea so 
this is, uh, in my opinion, this is the, the biggest uh, challenge encounter for that. And, and what do you think, uh, like for us, the what can we do to, you know, uh, at least mitigate those challenges? What are the things that can be done? Well, um, this is a very good question because I think that this is uh, something that will make it to spread out. Uh, the only thing that we can do, in my opinion, is to create a friendly e-wallet that can be handled by bots in instant messenger platforms. If you do that, anyone, anyone in any place that use a WhatsApp, an instant messenger, can take advantage of doing that. And maybe you can avoid the, the, the difficult of dealing with the e-wallets uh, like, like they are today. And maybe you can, uh, there is a need. I don't like this, this second idea, but anyway, there's a need of the market. They are used when they, they forget the password. They have a way to recover it. Mm. So we have to discover a way to, to do that in a blockchain because blockchain doesn't allow that. It's, it's inside the technology. You cannot do that. But maybe if you find something like that, maybe if, if you store in three different places, there will be a, a, a market solution for that. Okay, so you, you have three parents or... Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure about that, but if you, if you find a way to, to uh, recover seed words, it will be those two challenges it will make a uh, blockchain be something like water mm. okay talking about uh regulations does government regulation uh, help or not help the blockchain advocacy this is some kind of controversial question. I'm sorry to put you into that situation, but yes, yes, yes. It's very dangerous to, to answer the, this question. Uh, in my opinion, and that's personal, um, I don't think that regulations help. Okay. I think that educations help because you cannot regulate. It's like uh, I give an example every time that I give uh, that I was in a speech. It's like the government regulates the operation of multiply. And they said, you can only add, you cannot multiply. It's a mathematical operation. You cannot regulate it. You understand? Mm -hmm. So uh, you can educate people to use multiplication, okay? Because it's, it's easier to say 10 times something in a place of 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. It will give you the same result, but you cannot regulate it. Something that is a mathematical operator. And this is what happened with blockchain. You can educate people. If I was at the, uh, at the government, I don't fight against it. I just uh, be associated with every blockchain and begin to be part of the game. Because this will be a very easy and a very uh, cheap way to get into the game. Because, you know, this is, this is something that you cannot avoid. You can say that uh, it's difficult, it has a problem of education, but you have a new generation. Mm -hmm. we, are giving, uh, we are giving course to uh, students of uh, 12 to 14 years old that begin to realize the use of... Uh, of crypto uh, uh, um, um, assets, and uh, it's easy for them to live with this idea. So, in a place of trying to regulate something that is very difficult to regulate, maybe you can have some small regulation, some small regulation. But I don't, I don't think that this is against the blockchain concept. Blockchain is a concept. I, I, I did realize that, uh, that what Satoshi wants to do, he wants to substitute the need of ha having trust between two different entities, make a transaction. So this, if you try to, re to regulate this, it's, it's very bad. 
you you have to leave at least the market in doing something about it. You can regulate it uh, after that. I, I don't think that if you try to to um, uh, suffocate this technology, you have success. I think that it's better to let the technology goes on and you begin to, re to make some regulations. And some people say, oh, okay, you have those uh, pyramid. Um, yeah, I don't know if the word in English is this, but uh, the, the, uh, you can use uh, Bitcoin, you can use diamonds, you can use uh, uh, cathode, you can use whatever you want to do the pyramid. So it's not a property of a blockchain. And uh, it's not a property. Uh, the, 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 the drug dealers were not with a very big stock waiting for someone to give a solution for them to make a transaction. It, it's not true, this. So I think that we have to, to be very careful trying to regulate it. And we cannot make a division. I think that the government should play in this area then we can do some regulation if it it needs a regulation. And I think uh, also to add up would, would be an adoption and awareness and education for the government itself on what blockchain really is. Because uh, looking at it, most regulators really don't understand uh, the blockchain concept. And uh, I guess that would also help them uh, in terms of you know, if they want to re really regulate it or not. Don't you think that blockchain itself is a mathematical, um, uh, the person who did blockchain is a mathematical genius? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because he saw something. And in fact, it, it almost like uh, the guy that creates quantum mechanics, it's, it, it, the guy, the Schrodinger, he, he doesn't know what he created because he got to a solution that fits on the world. Mm -hmm. He was looking at that. And many years later, we began with transistors and a lot of things that were uh, from this, uh, this idea. So I think that the guy that creates Bitcoin, he, just, he doesn't know that he was creating blockchain. Mm -hmm. Blockchain is like an Excel. In Bitcoin, it's only a file that goes in this Excel. So you can have a lot of different things. We, we, we didn't talk about smart contract that I think that are something very, very good. Very, very good that will permit you to, to get rid of uh, paying taxes and, uh, and uh, wait for the government to do something. The government can say, okay, we are going to build this bridge here. So it's a smart contract there and you can go there and see. If the people want to do that, if the bridge is needed for the people, they will do that and it will be a smart contract. And so I think that this is this is uh, uh, something that it, it's, it's very good. And we like, I, 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 I like that you agree with me. Education in this is very important because if you have education with this, it will be something that can guarantee freedom, transparency, transparency, and maybe less corruption. That it's something that it's very good for us in all the world, not only in Brazil or in any any places specifically. We have two to three minutes, uh, Professor. Uh, what do you think about DAO? Because um, where will DAO be in a few years from now? And Maybe you could uh, at least, um, have you had projects with DAO? DA? Well, uh, um, here in Brazil, we have, uh, I forget the name, but I think that we have one of the first DAO in the world. It's, uh, it's with a P, I forget it. It's, uh, uh, okay, I think that, uh, for you to get a DAO uh, running, you should have uh, a knowledge, a, a experience with the crypto uh, uh, money, with the crypto asset, with the crypto token before. 
because this is something that uh, is already on the mind of the people that do some communities that can deal with some results that can be uh, inside themselves doing something that makes money for everybody but you should have this idea first because blockchain is something that makes viable this idea to make a community working for inside that community and make money inside and stimulate it inside that uh, that community i think that DAO is a consequence of uh, uh success of blockchain inside a society that wants to be democratic in terms of uh, of uh, money uh, of uh, resource of uh, financing their project not money but financing their project and uh, uh, I, I I would like that every every educator every teacher every professor every entrepreneur every citizen they help us to share and spread this little concept of distributed public confident network because this can give a a, a very good horizon, uh, horizon to economy to uh, relations between people you understand so you can uh, deal with someone that you don't trust because uh, the platform will do the, the the public trust and this will make some relations very very easy and very good to to uh, the people in general you know professor there's one there's one question here um from our audience Will HTML coin stay decentralized? Well, <laughs> well, this is very, very difficult uh, to to answer. But I think that uh, uh, it can. It, it has. Um, uh, it has it, its own personality. So I think that there are uh, space for different types of solution, okay? And I think, and I think that uh, maybe if HTML um, begins to do some some kind of uh, of uh, service, and it is it has some good success, yeah, I don't see any problem to to make um, how they they said to make. Uh, when a startup do a, a bend on the direction. In, in fact, I, I don't feel comfortable to, to answer this question. I think that we have to let it work a little bit more and to see what are the results and the needs of the market because I think that everything on this will be uh, will be related to the success that it has on the market okay when we began with learn coin we thought that we are we are going to be the most unbelievable company in education in brazil and we can sell one learn coin you understand mm. so we have to make a a, a, a turn and um we have to respect the market. Uh, the the coin is a good idea, but uh, the market is not uh, uh, prepared for that. So I think that this was a way for me to not to answer the HTML question. <laughs> yes, I, I totally, totally agree on that with regards to it depends on the market itself because usually the market decides on where we should go to ask not just not just uh, an advocate for blockchain or coins or cryptocurrency but mostly as a businessman or entrepreneur the market would eventually decide for the future so my last two questions is what's your vision of blockchain adopted in the educational system not just in brazil but you know looking at it in a bigger perspective in the globe what was the question what is the perspective of blockchain in the what's what what's your vision of blockchain being adopted in the educational system how do you well, see blockchain uh, adopted okay 
Uh, I think that, uh, again, it, it's my opinion, but I th it's a must because in the next two years after this uh, coronavirus uh, situation, we cannot avoid to use the benefits of this technology that will guarantee freedom, transparency, and less corruption. So this is something that everybody in every place of the world wants today. Okay, so I think that it will be adopted because it must be adopted. In two years, you're not going to see someone say blocking, what is that? They don't care about what is that, but they have some experience enough to say this is something that guaranteed freedom, transparency, and less corruption. Yeah, uh, I I've, I want to, uh, just to follow up, fourth industrial revolution and blockchain. What's the role of blockchain in fourth industrial revolution? Well, I think that um, I, I would, I, I like to, to say something about uh, the use of blockchain that will permit uh, companies like um, uh, Volkswagen and uh, Ford and other companies. That's it, it, the name here in Brazil is Montadores. It's assembly manufacturers. Okay, mm -hmm. they will permit those guys. They don't have to spend a lot of money, for example, to do a test drive, uh, test drive track because they will put some IOTs on the cars and they will have data from the cars and real data. And so this real data has to be guaranteed that it's real. So you, you put blockchain to do those things. So you can use blockchain to guarantee that you are dealing with something that is uh, authentic, that is uh, the really what happens. So it was something that you cannot guarantee it on the past because someone can manipulate it at the bank. So with blockchain, you you can avoid this manipulation. So you can have a bunch of data that are trustable, and this is very good because this is this makes the uh, the the cost goes down, lower the cost. Okay, for example, if Ford doesn't have to have a a, a, a drive test track. It, it has a lot of money that they are not going to spend so they can put the, the cars can have lower price. You have a lot of, uh, of, uh, of uh, possibilities to, to uh, supply information and make this information uh, trustable. And I think that this will be the, the, the benefit of this for the industrial 4.0. In conclusion, thank you so much, Professor, for being here. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate here in the eight, in the Crypto Lounge and HTML Coin Foundation at the same time, Altash Blockchain. And it's good that we, we have you here so that most people would really understand what's going on on the crypto space, blockchain in Brazil, and, and education. For your final thoughts, I'll give you the full frame. Maybe, uh, you know, your final message for our viewers and at the same time, uh, your LinkedIn account or social media account where they could contact you if they want to reach out. Okay. Um, again, thanks for the invitation. It was a pleasure for me. And um, if I can say something, I will be, I will say again, that we need help from educators, teachers, professors, entrepreneurs, and citizens. Just let spread out this concept. This will be something very, very good for our society. And for sure, we're going to get a new stage with this. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to uh, keep in touch with me, uh, you have on the screen my, uh, here I think you have my uh, Twitter, my Pinterest, my Instagram, everything is uh, on uh, with this address here. Okay. Thank you, sir, for the invitation. 
Thank you so much again, Professor Manuel Belém. And uh, I think we're going to have, uh, um, what do you call this, a summit or international summit or a blockchain conference. And we would love to have you as one of our speakers. Again, uh, thank you so much to our viewers right now. Stay safe, be safe. God bless you all. We have an Altash University that is offering scholarship if you want to learn more about blockchain. Professor, God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.